Dr. Ron Jr. and in today's video we're going to be talking about a ruptured disc is and we'll also be talking about a few related things on that topic but in order for us to talk about what a ruptured disc is we first have to understand what a normal spinal disc looks like and so what I've done here is I brought up this image for you and on the image on the left here we're looking at a spine and we're looking at it from the side and then in this image on the right we're looking at the spine also but we're looking at it from the top down this time so let's look at the side view first basically what we have here is we've got the bones of the spine or what we call vertebrae that are stacked on top of each other and in between every set of bones there is a disc and the disc is really important because basically it acts as a cushion separating the bones and making sure that the bones don't rub together whenever you move which would be very painful so the discs are actually really significant in as far as what their function is now if we come over here to the image on the right this oval structure is the disc and like I said we're looking at it from the top down and you look if you look at the way it's put together it has a strong outer covering called the annulus fibrosus and then there's a soft jelly-like center called the nucleus pulposus and basically with a ruptured disc what happens is that the wall on the outside of the disc will actually tear through and then the nucleus is going to push through and you're going to get um, a fragment of the nucleus that will actually exit the disc so let me actually show you how this looks first and then we'll talk about the significance of this so if you continue watching the image and just focus right down here um, on the right side of the disc here what you're going to see is that the disc tears and then you can see that as it continues the nucleus is going to start to push through where the disc is damaged then eventually the back of the disc is going to tear and then what ends up happening at the end is that a part of the nucleus will actually exit the disc and if you come over here to the image on the left what you'll see is that that fragment right here it's actually pushed out and this area right behind where the discs are this is called the spinal canal and that's actually where the spinal cord lives so when you've got this free fragment in that spinal canal what happens is that it starts to put a lot of pressure onto the spinal cord and that's where a lot of the problems will start to develop so if we come back over here to the right this structure right here right behind the disc this is the spinal cord and you can see off of the spinal cord come the spinal nerves now the way that this works is that your nervous system is composed of your brain your spinal cord and the spinal nerves and the brain of course controls everything within your body but the way that it does that is it sends messages down your spinal cord and out through the spinal nerves and the nerves will actually take those messages out to different parts of the body and tell your body what to do so when you have this ruptured disc it'll put pressure on either the nerves or the spinal cord and what that's going to do is it's going to affect whatever those nerves are controlling and talking to so let me bring up another image here just to show you what I'm talking about if we look at this image of this person and the spine what this is going to do is it's going to show you where all the different nerves are going to so for example if you have a ruptured disc down here in the lower back you can see what parts of the body are going to be affected so for example if I have um, a ruptured disc in my lower back you might develop pain that shoots down into the legs or what we would call sciatica you might have weakness in the legs or numbness that sort of thing but this also controls all of the abdominal organs as well so you might notice that there will be changes in your bowel or bladder habits as far as you know for example you might not be able to hold it when you're trying you know when you have to go to the bathroom you may get diarrhea you may get constipation so there's a lot of things that can actually develop because of the pressure on the nerves that occurs when a person has a ruptured disc as we go up higher in the middle back area here most of this is going to be affecting the um, chest area so you might have pain that shoots around the rib cage you might have difficulty breathing you might notice changes with the way that your heart is functioning so a lot of those types of things will be affected by a problem in the middle back and then once we get up higher these nerves are going to control things like your arms um, your neck area it'll control things like your vision your hearing all of these types of things will be controlled by problems in the neck so that's actually the true significance of the ruptured disc and that's why in most cases you're not just going to have pain in your back that's just not the way it works usually you will have pain in your back but you're going to notice that the pain or the problem actually goes to other areas as well and it's all because of the pressure on those nerves now if you want to learn more about 
a ruptured disc as far as what causes it, um, more detailed symptoms, or even the treatment options that are available, what you can do is you can come over to my website. It's healyourbulgingdisc.com, and I'll put a link in the description below this video. And But all you got to do is click on that. You can come here to the website, and if you scroll down, you can read through this if you want to, but down lower, you'll see here where I list out the different spinal disc problems that you can research. So if we're going to look at the ruptured disc, all you have to do is click on ruptured disc, and what it's going to do is it's going to bring up a page that is all about that. And so you can see some images. I go into a lot more detail about what the problem is, what you can expect from it, whether or not you have to have surgery because of it. All of this is detailed here. And if you keep scrolling down to the bottom of the page, you'll notice that I have a table of contents here. And you can click on whatever information you're trying to learn about. So if you want to learn about the symptoms, I've got that listed here, causes, different treatment options, so I go into all of the different medications that you might be prescribed and how they work. We talk about side effects, drug interactions. I talk about natural alternatives to the medications that you might want to consider, exercises. We also talk about surgery and what the success rates are and that sort of thing. So all of this detail is covered on the website. So I welcome you to go there and visit, uh, take a look around, and I'm sure you'll find it really helpful. All right, well, thank you so much for taking the time to um, watch this video with me. I hope you found it helpful, and I hope you have a great day.